The Weird Circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bellkeeper, hold the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the Weird Circle. Phantoms of a world gone by speak again the immortal tale, The Black Parchment. In all this malevolent world, there cannot be one who is more accursed than I, Raphael Roland, for I must decide within the next few moments whether I should die in order that someone else might live. Time was when I wanted to die, but the mocking gods had their little joke, and so I lived. But now it is so hard to die, for I am rich and powerful, and even the library of my home in which I sit reflects my glory. This is no time to die. Then... Then my life should have slipped from me, that night when I walked along the banks of the Seine, penniless and broken and lonely. The voice of the Seine was a soft voice, and it beckoned to me, promised me peace. Then, then my life should have slipped from me. But the mocking gods had their little joke, and I was interrupted. Why was I ever interrupted? Oh, oh what's that? Someone's in trouble. Where are you, man? Speak up! Hang on, old man. I'll be at your side in a moment. I'll, I'll manage. Now, grab hold of my arm. That's it. While I cling to this boulder. Try now. There, I have your arm. Don't worry, I'll get you up. There you are. Oh, now, do not talk, old man. Catch your breath first. Oh, you, you have saved my, my life. Saved your life? Yeah. Well, yes, I did, didn't I? <laughs> oh, 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 what a strange laugh that is. <laughs> Perfectly fitting for a strange moment. <laughs> I came oh. down here to the river to lose my life, and instead, oh. I save yours. <laughs> so. Uh -huh. Allow me to introduce oh. myself. I am Raphael Roland, pauper and fool. I, I am Edmond de la Trousse, Dr. Edmond de la Trousse. Physician? Quite so. And I should add... Made a physician as well. So, you deal in both the body and the spirit. Oh. Well, Doctor, your observation of me has the advantage of a double edge. I have found life too bitter to endure. And I... I have found life too sweet to give up. A life which you have saved for me. Come, come to my house. I should like to repay you. What can you give me? My need is too great. Come, come along, my son. I am older than you. And that much wiser. My house is nearby... Perhaps I can fill your need. Oh, very well. What have I to lose? Exactly. Perhaps I can repay you beyond your wildest dreams. Here. Here we are. Let us both rest for a while. I'll sit down for a moment. Ah, you are distressed and I am tired. Now we must relax and talk. I have nothing to say. 
Listen here, old man. You promised me something if I would come to your house. Give it to me and let me go. In due time, my son, how can I decide what to give you if I don't know what distresses you? I have nothing to say. You can be at ease with me, Raphael. As you said yourself, my observations have the advantage of a double edge. I am both doctor and metaphysician. My cures have the same advantage. Well, I, I really have nothing special well, to say. speak up anyway. Tell me why you wanted to destroy yourself. I guess because... Because I am by profession a fool. Go on. I'm the poorest and loneliest man in the world. And of my own doing. When my parents died, they left me a large sum with which to continue my education. I gambled it away and was dismissed from the university. I found myself without money nor with any special gifts with which to earn it. Well, I cannot condemn you, Raphael. It has happened before. And tonight... Tonight, Jeanette, the woman I loved and wished to marry, rejected me. Why? I promised her that I'd stop my gambling. I was down to my last franc, and this morning I... I bought a ticket on the National Lottery. And it infuriated the young lady? Enough to break our engagement. And now Jeanette will marry someone else. Uh, you are indeed unfortunate, Raphael. Now do you see why I scorned you when you offered a reward? What could you give me? Riches? Position? The woman I love? Perhaps I can. I think you're joking with me, Doctor. One glance at your house tells me that you're not very wealthy. Ah, uh, do not be fooled by your surroundings. I could have all the money I wish to have, but I don't care for riches. I'm interested only in knowledge. Uh, I shall prove to you that I am not speaking nonsense. What are you going to show me? The instrument by which you too can gain riches and power. I shall give it to you as a reward for saving my life. Here. Here it is. This parchment. Spread it on the table. What? How can that piece of black parchment give me what I want? Naturally, you doubt it. You are young and you still have much to learn. See the inscription burned into the parchment? Yes, I see it, but what does all this mean? The language is Sanskrit. Let me translate it for you. I suppose I'll have to endure this travesty until the end. Go on. He who possesses this parchment wills his life to it. Should he desire anything, all he must do is wish for it. The wish will be granted. But with the granting of each wish, the parchment will shrink, and when it disappears, the owner will die. Well... <laughs> you poor, tired old man. You must have exerted yourself all too much in that river. Laugh if you wish, but take the parchment. Oh, I'll take it, Doctor. I shouldn't want to hurt your feelings. Perhaps I can sell it and earn myself a franc or two. Or perhaps I can use it as a doormat to wipe my feet on as I go in and out. I took the parchment and fled from his house. Inside my own room, I threw the parchment down and sagged into a chair. Within me, mixed emotions fluttered about. Did the parchment represent a devilish joke? Or a great metaphysical truth? I suddenly became insatiably curious... I spread out the blackened skin. It was about the size of a tablecloth. I laughed at the thought of it, growing smaller and smaller as it consumed my life with each wish I made. And then... Now, who could that be? Uh, come in. Ah, so you're back, monsieur. Well, good evening, Madame Boulard, my dear, dear landlady. Now, don't you mix me up with your pretty phrases. I've come to speak to you very frankly. Do tell me. Well, I'm listening attentively. I want the rent. The rent? Oh, now you can wait for that a day or so longer. Can't you, Madame Boulard? I have waited long enough. But I can get the money for you easily. In fact, all I have to do is wish for it, and it's yours. Monsieur Roland, you are a nuisance. Either you are brooding or you are hysterical. In fact, I can get all the money I want by just wishing. Then you better make a wish before morning. I intend to have you evicted tomorrow. Oh, don't trouble yourself. I'll make the wish right now. I wish to have seven million francs. There. Oh, I'm not at all impressed with your theatricals. If I do not have the rent tomorrow, you leave. As you are my witness, I've made the wish. Soon I will have seven million francs and pay you every penny I owe. Oh, what a pity. <laughs> and you might have been an engineer. Oh, rather a wealthy man than an engineer, my dear landlady. Monsieur Roland lives here? 
Send him away, monsieur. It's much too late for visitors. Well, now, surely I must see who it is. And since you've graciously kept my door open... Coming, coming. Yes? Monsieur Roland? I am he. I bring you happy news, monsieur. Here, sign this. What? What's this all about? You have won, monsieur. You have won. Won what? The National Lottery. Just a moment ago, they had the drawing. I was dispatched to find you at once. You have won first prize. First prize? You are rich, monsieur. Seven million francs. Oh, oh, I heard it. I heard it. Good night, monsieur. You are rich? Seven million francs. Yes. What strange fortune. Oh, of course I'll wait for the rent. No hurry now. Oh. Why do you start? Oh, it just occurred to me. You are possessed with the devil. Oh, uh, calm yourself, madame. A moment ago you wished for seven million francs and it came true. Where are you going? My strange fortune had frightened madame Boulard. And it also frightened me. I could not get the black parchment out of my brain. I went back into my room and picked the parchment up. It was no bigger than a shawl. It had shrunk. The next day, I was calmer. I began to sense my new power. Perhaps there was a way to make Jeanette change her mind. That afternoon, I went to her home. She was surprised to see me. Raphael, I thought we'd agreed not to see each other again. But I had to see you, Jeanette. I'm rich. We can be married and live like aristocrats. Oh, Paris knows that you've won the lottery, Raphael. But money has never mattered to me. Oh, Jeanette, I promise you, I'll never gamble again. I'll invest. I'll go into business. We'll live such a happy life. Oh, no, Raphael, it is too late. I've tried hard to love you, but I cannot. I... I love Henri as I've never loved you. Fully, completely. You... You're going to marry Henri? Yes. I expect him in a moment, so please leave. I'll not you, I'll let, you, let you marry him. I, I'll not. There's nothing you can do, Raphael. Now, please leave. I, I shouldn't want him to find you here. I'll not let you marry him. Don't be difficult. I beg of you. Oh, look. Look through the window. Yes, I see him. Your dear Henri. He's on the other side of the street. He'll be crossing in a moment to knock at my door. Now, please leave at once. Very well. But I'll do everything I can to make you love me again. I rushed out of the house and clung to the wall. Henri was crossing the street. The black parchment was focused in my mind's mirror. And then I made a wish. Slowly and surely I intoned it. May he never reach her side alive. I trembled with expectation. In a matter of seconds, Henri's fate would be decided. I turned my face away, for I could not look. But I heard it all. <laughs> My wish had made me a murderer. I went back to the boarding house and tried to shut myself away, but I could not rest. The black parchment lay on my dressing table. I reached it in a bound and then choked. No longer was it as big as a shawl. It looked more like a napkin. My life was shrinking away. Who's there? Madame Boulard, I wish to speak to you, monsieur. All right, come in. I want to say that I am sorry for the way I acted last night, monsieur. I am not concerned about the rent anymore. Pay me when you like and... Oh. What's the matter? Are you ill, monsieur? Well, no, no. You've aged so, monsieur. You've aged. Look at your hair. My hair? Your hair has turned gray. A few days later, my composure returned, and I went to see Jeanette. She sobbed, and I comforted her. She spoke tearfully of Henri. Raphael, even though I'm very lonely, do not come to see me. 
But why not, ma chérie? Because, because it will arouse, arouse false hopes in you. Is there a truer hope than the hope of our eventual marriage? That is it, Raphael. I shall never marry you. Ah, do not be so certain, Jeanette. In a few weeks, months, who knows how you will feel? But I know how I feel. I do not love you, Raphael. I shall never marry you. Now, please, for the sake of both of us, please, Raphael, do not come again. In other times, I might have remained and begged. But now I could afford to be more independent. The black parchment had given me wealth and had eliminated my only rival for Jeanette's affection. It could also make her love me. But as I stood before the parchment, ready to intone my wish, my confidence began to waver. Did I dare make the wish? Did I dare? I did not know the answer. And then I thought of Dr. Edmund de la Trousse. I snatched up the parchment and made my way to his study. I am happy to see you, Raphael. Sit down. Tell me what has happened. Oh, much, much. My first wish made me a millionaire. I know that. Yes, and then... Then I made another wish. Ah? And what was that? Well, perhaps I sinned and... My son, I am not concerned with virtue, nor ethics, nor morals... I am only an observer and calculator of truth. I leave it to the court and the clergy to enforce the application of truth. You need not fear taking me into your confidence. Well, well, I wish that Henri, my rival for Jeanette's hand, I, I wish that he die. So? And he died, of course, in a manner which does not implicate you. He was run over by a coach and four as he crossed the street. Ah, then you have done well. You are wealthy and your path is clear with Jeanette. Clear, save for Jeanette herself. She does not love me anymore. She will not marry me. Well, that can be easily remedied. I know, Doctor, but but tell me, is there enough of the parchment left for one more wish? Do I dare make it? I cannot say. I deal in truth, not in speculation. Then what shall I do? Advise me. You love Jeanette very much. You want her more than life itself. Yes, yes, of course, of course. More than life itself, Raphael. Oh. Yes, you must make your own decision. I... I want her. I want her more than life itself. Then wish, Raphael, wish. Very well. I wish that Jeanette be in love with me. Enough to marry me. There, you have made your wish. But... but the parchment, doctor. What's happening? It is shrinking, my son. Yes, Yes, it is. I cannot look. Mm, how easily it shrinks. I'm going to die now. I know it. This was my last wish. A priest, doctor. I must not die without the sacrament. Ah, uh, you will not die, Raphael. What? Not this time. Has it stopped? Is there something left of the parchment? It is now the size of a lace handkerchief. Uh, I made my wish and I did not die. <laughs> no, no, my son. Not this time. But... Let me warn you, be careful next time. Oh, next time? Oh, I, I won't worry about that, Doctor. I think you had better. Oh, no, no. You see, there won't be a next time. I threw back my head and squared my aching shoulders and rushed to Jeanette's. What stanza of time carries with it more music than the reconciliation? I felt as if the symphony of it all would burst me asunder. Oh, Raphael, when you left me this morning, I was determined never to see you again. But then a feeling overwhelmed me. I was overcome with longing and shame for sending you away. Ah, uh, what is done is done, Jeanette. Now we are together. Now let me look at you as I used to. Let me be warmed by the warmness of your face. Oh, Raphael, you have suffered much, haven't you? It was not easy without you. Your hair, it's turning gray, and your color is gone, and, and there are lines around your mouth. Yes, I have suffered much. Oh, but never mind, my darling. We'll be married at once. My love will make you young again. My devotion will give you back your youth. We planned it just as we spoke. For the moment I was free of the black parchment... But I was not destined to remain free of it for long. Strange how inevitable doom appears in simple disguises, 
in matter-of-fact events of daily life. The one time I never expected to find a sign of the horror ahead was during an intimate supper party, which Jeanette and I were enjoying so much. A supper party. And yet, the sign appeared, and it shook me to my marrow. Oh, look, darling, the wishbone. I found the wishbone. Why, yes. <laughs> From the tone of your voice, I had expected a diamond brooch. Oh, the wishbone, Raphael. Come on, break it with me. <laughs> of course, of course. Now, hold tight. All right, I will count. One, mm -hmm. two, three. <laughs> oh, you have one, Raphael. You get your wish. <laughs> so I have. Very well, I'll make a wish. I'll... I'll... Make a wish. Out loud, Raphael. I want to hear it. A wish? I almost made a wish. Raphael. Raphael, what has happened to you? N nothing, dear one. I... I had better lie down for a moment. Raphael, darling, let me help you. No, just leave me alone for... for a little while. How innocent and disarming was the sign of my approaching doom. I had almost made a wish. But even though my wish might be in jest, the parchment would be in earnest. One more wish, and it would shrink into nothingness. A glib remark, a slip of the tongue, and my life would shrink away. Some time later, Jeanette came to join me. I felt I could remain silent no longer. I told her everything. Raphael, is this fantastic story True. I would not lie to you, Jeanette. And here is the proof. The black parchment. Why, there, there's hardly anything left. Why do you think I'm haunted? Once the black parchment could cover a table. Now it's smaller than a lace handkerchief. Oh, Raphael. Raphael, what have you done? Oh, do not turn your face from me, Jeanette. I need your strength. No, please, do not come near me. You have bewitched me. My love for you is not a free spirit, but chained to the will of that parchment. Do not come near me. Do not come near me. Jeanette. She went to her room and remained there. For days she lay on her couch, unspeaking, unsmiling. The food I brought her remained untouched. I could not force her to eat. On the fourth week, I knelt beside her and pleaded. Jeanette, Jeanette, my darling, you say nothing but your eyes speak for you. Tell me what you were thinking. Henri, I was thinking of Henri. It was because I loved you. You are a murderer. You willed his death. If I wronged him, it was made right by my love for you. You murdered him. You murdered him so that the path would be free to enslave me. Jeanette, oh, Jeanette, the power of love cannot be denied. Love compelled me to will a murder and to capture your affection. Love is strong, but justice is stronger. My love for you remains, for you have bewitched me. But deep down inside of me there is only scorn. Please, do not speak that way. Scorn will conquer my love, will keep it from you. My love will remain alive because you willed it so, but it will be withheld from you. I shall never again, in speech, in action, give you the warmth, the comfort, the precious security of my love. I shall be out of your reach. Soon I shall have excluded you by death. Oh, no, no, not death. Do not say that, Jeanette, do not say that. I was distraught beyond all measure. Even as I looked at her, she seemed to grow weaker, to sink away. There was no one to turn to but Dr. De La Truce. I called for him, and he came. I have examined her, my son. Isn't there anything we can do? By ordinary means, no. She will not leave until morning. Then the issue is clear. Only I can save her. Yes, my boy. The choice is yours. I do not envy you. Only I can wish her life. With one last phrase, I can barter mine for hers. Will you please leave me for a moment, Doctor? Of course. I shall go back to Jeanette again. If you need me, call. Yes, Doctor. Goodbye.
In all this malevolent world, there cannot be one who is more accursed than I. It is hard to die surrounded by the glory of my wealth. At least Jeanette will know the meaning of my final act of courage, for I love her more than life itself. Ah, uh, there you are, black parchment, resting on my writing table. I want to look at you as I make my last wish. In this concluding moment, you will not stare me down. I wish that my dearest wife, Jeanette, survive this night, and that she continue to live a free and full and happy life. There. It is done. It is done. Uh, uh. Raphael, Raphael, Jeanette is rallying. She... Oh. Of course she is, Doctor. And now I can rest forever. The wish is made. There is no parchment left to plague me. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought you the immortal story of the Black Parchment. Bellkeeper, toll the bell.